Welcome back, fam. This is NAB Day 3. What up, A-Fam? Kitty here. And we are at the press booth waiting to see what all the fuss is about with the Black Magic Cinema 4K pocket camera. That's what's going down next. We've kept all of the really the things that people loved about the Pocket Cinema camera, being able to use these micro four thirds lenses, having 13 stops at dynamic range, uh, having ProRes as well as raw recording. You know, these are the things that people really attach themselves to with the Pocket Cinema camera. But we've done all the upgrades that people have been asking for for years. Things like being able to take a photo and just stilling that off as a DNG file on the folder, having multiple recording capabilities with our SD card or a CFast card, and new technologies like having USB-C where we can record directly to a drive. These are the kind of features that people have been asking for and we've been happy to be able to put into what is certainly a larger camera than the original Pocket Cinema camera, but being able to do 4K and Ultra HD, there's a lot of thermal that we have to work with on there, so we've got this nice big camera, but in doing so, we're able to do things like add this beautiful big 5-inch screen on the back. Having that big screen, adding new functionality like being able to load up user LUTs, having those be pulled up with function buttons, uh, being able to have a much wider ISO range. This is our first camera that has a dual native ISO, which means basically you have a much wider range to be able to dealing with these ISO ranges without having noise and grain being introduced. So the touchscreen's great. It's very responsive, super bright, very low reflective. So if we take it out in the sun, it looks great. The ability to actually kind of scroll around so that you can actually see within the 4K image where you're going. But, you know, tons of new features we've added in here. The final version is actually a carbon fiber carbonate, which is a mouthful, but that's going to be just a tiny bit lighter than the prototype units here. It's going to help dissipate heat a little bit better. So about one 1.7 pounds or under, no battery, no lens. That's just what it would be. What type of people is this camera intended for? Well, the great news when you have a camera that comes in at a thousand plus dollars is, you know, it can kind of be anything to anybody. So if it's a student filmmaker and it's their first camera they're working with in a professional cinema way, it could be a crash camera for Hollywood because they could just put it in a car and drive it off a cliff and they're not really too worried about their $1,200. One of the cool ideas that we thought about was, you know, the, if record, button the, record, the record button on the front here. I can't believe you get 4K RAW for $1,300. And you could throw this on a tilt -a gimbal I saw it in your pamphlet. I just did a review on the tilt -a GT. So this is the camera for that. This is Jason. We're at the Adobe booth, and look what he's rocking with the Fuji film. He's a big Fuji guy. XH1. And the bigger lens fit on it too. You said the 16 to 55 fits just fine. It works just fine. Earlier I was shooting some B-roll with the 56 1.2, getting some creamy slow mo. Awesome. Creamy. Creamy. Look at all this stuff I got on mine. And it's I know. Still Actually, I'm jealous. I, I, I'm jealous. I want that. I also saw DJI booth earlier, and they have the focus adjustment mount thing. And, and, yeah. But you can buy it separately, and we think we could get it and have it work on this. You're going to hack it? I'm going to try. All right, we're here with David, and we're going to learn some 360 editing on Premiere. And I hear about these awesome goggles that you could throw on and edit. It's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So what we've been doing at Premiere for some time now is revealing features that are making it easier and easier for a 360 video editor to get in and work with that, that content. And we work with everything from monoscopic 360 video to stereoscopic over under or stereoscopic side by side. We support ambisonic audio, which is that all around audio. I heard about that. Yeah, a lot of fun and so important for that spherical video to kind of know where you should look. So we have all that supported in Premiere now. And what we were doing with the goggle is making it easy when you've completed your rough cut edit you, and you want to get in and see how those cuts are coming together between the clips or how the color is looking or how your titles, motion graphics are looking. It's really easy to go into the goggle, jump around your timeline, view those, those spots you're worried about, make sure they look good. And it shows you what's happening kind of behind you. This white dot showing you where you're currently looking. And if you needed to look behind you, rather than getting up in your chair and turning all around, which kind of gets tiring, you could just point and shoot to change your view. So it just makes it really simple to kind of jump around and see what's happening. I'm going to make so many 360 videos now. It's insane. <laughs> we have um, lots of different ways of managing your preview. So you can just press our play button and start your playback, which is this button right here. You can stop it by pressing it once again. You can hold it down and scrub left and right to get to individual frames to kind of verify that one frame you're worried about. And if you want to shuttle, you can just press it and lift. Now I'm half speed regular speed, high speed, 
do the reverse, same thing. So it's just really easy to navigate through and play back those parts of the timeline that you need to verify. It's a lot more fun, it's like a game. And it is, it's like a game and people have had a great time. The room was vibes, it was cool lighting, it was very like modern. The balcony. Yep. And, uh, you watched really cool. my vlog. I love your lighting. And we just ran into gear. each other. How do you run two channels? So um, it's hard because uh, we I'm like struggling with just one channel. We, we definitely we put out about two videos a week on video influencers, and then two a week on Think Media. And I try to go live, or we try to go live once a week on each. So we try to do six a week. You just put out great videos because also YouTube is such a search engine that videos can be found for months, weeks, years to come. You know what I mean? That's how we found my video. Looked up NAB, right? I looked up some NAB stuff. Because it's the broadcast community, it's not as much story, style, vibe. Like the videos are like shot, you know, I don't know, they're not like depth of field. No one's like grading anything. So when I saw your stuff, I was like, okay, we got vibes coming to NAB, so. Any tips? I guess you gave a lot of tips just now, but I guess any other YouTuber tips? We just had a good conversation with Levi Allen, right? Mm -hmm. From Left Coast. Oh, and yeah, we saw him the other day. Levi's dope. Shout out to Levi. He's really dope. <laughs> and uh, he was talking about, you know, a lot of people want to vlog. I think that that is a hard way to grow on YouTube, vlogging. I think that you could vlog, but also do searchable content that's value-based because there's a lot of good vloggers out there. Whereas if they meet you because you really help solve a problem, like you help solve filmmaking problems and lighting problems, but then they're like, oh, I like your vibe. And then they might follow you for the vlog. So for people that are just vlogging, again, if it works, like especially like it. starting off too, starting no out. one knows who you are. No Why would yet. they follow you? But everybody wants to do that because they also what people do is they compare their beginning to somebody else's middle, mm -hmm. and they all of a sudden want to be Casey Neistat or just jump right in to be like not knowing Casey did a hundred videos, journalistic pieces, bike lanes, a million subscribers before he went into vlogging. Plus, mm -hmm. he's also a unicorn. Mm -hmm. Creating content is really hard and it's exhausting. You so think doing YouTube videos is easy. It is not easy. Like people it. don't yeah. understand. If you don't love it and you're not passionate about it, then you're going to really burn out on like late night editing. You're and like, it oh, takes years. It takes years. For sure. For sure. What are you guys shooting on? We have the Cheeling by Snopa. You like it? I have like every gimbal though. Yeah. But it depends on my mood and where I'm going and what I'm shooting. Why did you put, why did you choose this gimbal? This one's my favorite running gun gimbal. It's the lightest and okay. it holds all of this. So it's perfect. And I wish you guys could see all of this, but I'm sure you have that. seen this. <laughs> Because there's a lot of all of this. Is that a small HD monitor? It is. You got the little arm on there, little clamp. Mm -hmm. You got your AVX system. By the way, we use the same mic. So. Audio is one of those things that you don't have to upgrade every six months. So. Exactly. I was using the G3s or G2s actually for like seven years. I paid about two grand for like mm -hmm. two stick mics. And anyways, you know, a little Pelican. We're nerding out here. Yeah. So. I love it. it was so awesome running into you. Super this awesome is like perfect. I'm, I'm pumped to see uh, just everything you're doing and, and uh, I know your channel is going to just keep growing because you're cool. You're putting out great work. You can tell when someone puts their heart, their style, their vibe into something like it really shines through. So thanks for everything you're putting out there. Yeah, you too. Oh my God. You're amazing. Hey everyone. We're at the Vitek Group and I'm here with Valentina to check out the new Be Free. So what is the difference between this one and the original? Hi, uh, good morning everyone. So basically this new version of the B3, uh, it has a couple of main feature difference. First, the lag. The lag is completely new and this specific configuration is carbon fiber and it has all the lever locks here, the M lock by Manfrotto. All the system here, the core of the tripod is super sturdy and has been reinforced. Uh, it has a special easy link and the head that you can see here, even if it's super compact, is a, a real fluid video head. I'm able to carry four kilos, which are eight pounds, 8.8 .8 pounds. And this is the same head as the other B-Free? Uh, the head is the same of the older version of the B-Free live, so we renew completely the legs. And how much does this weigh? Because it's carbon fiber now. Yes, this is carbon fiber now in kilos is 1.2. Uh, which are uh, 2.5. Two pounds, yeah. about. Yeah, exactly. And then you guys also have a photo version of this, too. As well. We have a photo version with a ball head. Uh, we have a ball head carrying uh, 8 kilos, which are 16 pounds, 17 pounds or less, yes. And then like the original, you could also fold it up really small. It's a perfect travel tripod. I bring mine all the time. I might have to get this one as well. Here with Giuseppe, checking out the Nitro Tech beast of a tripod here. Why is this so awesome? I love this one. Here's why. This year we are launching the brand new N12 Nitrotech that will complete the full range of Nitrotech. 
So last year at the NIB we introduced an N8 and now we are introducing an N12. Uh, and what's the difference between the two? Uh, is the counterbalance capability. So the N12 is able to counterbalance a payload between uh, 4 kilograms and 12 kilograms. Instead, an N8 is able to counterbalance a payload between uh, 0 and 8. So it depends on uh, what type of uh, gear you normally use and then you select uh, the head that uh, can be useful for your uh, camera configuration. Can you show people, I guess, the counterbalance and yes, what it does? Because so, I'm sure like a lot of people don't really understand. Yeah, the counterbalance is uh, done by the nitrogen piston that you can see uh, up here that is able to uh, basically force the camera and get the ability to the head to keep the tilt position no matter the range that the, um, the user is doing. So this is the main powerful element of the camera. So you can leave it without touching it? Look at that. Magic. Yeah. So you can do it at several stages and then this is the magic. Otherwise you have to unlock and lock exactly. this every single time. Yeah, exactly. New LED product with Bluetooth. Then the new combination with a new Pixie and a clamp. New Pixie tripods, guys. We basically redesigned completely the main body of the product in order to have a more comfort when you are holding the, the product so and it fits nicely when it folds up too yeah, yeah absolutely so you can uh, grip properly and also in terms of uh, finishing we try to select uh, this type of finishing to give it more uh, warm and comfort when you're holding it another important thing uh, is uh, the portrait mode so if you are doing uh, any stuff uh, with social media the the tripod is able to do it yeah that's new for sure yeah yeah with what the colors does this come in? Uh, dark gray, white, and red. So you're going to have any limited edition art type? We are studying them, yeah. New this little is hand another grip. kit. Yeah, this is another kit for the twist grip range. So we have launched last year this product itself. So a clamp, a bar, and a handle that combined together allows to get uh, several types of uh, grip. You can see here some uh, example. So with the hot shoe, you can attach, uh, you have the ability to attach any type of LED, microphone. There's possibilities for every type of shooter. We got phone shooters, we got cinema camera shooters, and also mirrorless people who travel a lot. Covered all y'all. Everyone's been talking about this Top Golf. So, we here. Yo, let's go. Oh, are we out? We're we getting you dog. Look at Jesus oh. fucking. I don't even know what this is. I thought I was dedicated coming at me a little RX100, yeah? But Kitty turns up with a full blown peak design bag full of camera gear, and I, now I feel like a bit of a, an amateur. But then the Vong and all the other squad. Is it recording? Here now? it is. Yeah, it's the recording. Guys the cool. Cheers. That's really cool. Filming you, so no pressure. Yeah, there's no, no pressure. No, no, no pressure. pressure. Oh. <laughs> I made fun of everyone, and here I am missing it two times. What up, APAM? Right here, coming out of my stomach. Where What's up, low gang? What's popping? Ha! Top golf, and what are we doing, James? We're about to get in a party bus. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my laughs> <God>, <laughs> <laughs> the hell is going on? <laughs>